This is a Bobcat T250 track loader, and it's got some issues, and we're going to fix it. recently got our hands on this Bobcat T250 and it's just been just just beat to death and we're thinking about giving it a decal overhaul just to get some paint on it and it's just covered with it must have been rented from five or six different companies it's got numbers and stickers all over it um, looks like it's an old RSC machine and it looks like someone has put sprockets on it and the tracks themselves are in pretty good shape there's a few little cracks here and there but tracks are decent we washed it twice and it's still just as muddy as it can be that's I think the last guy was logging with it but we've got it there's a company in Texas that that makes these decals so we've got those coming got a bunch of numbers we got to get off of it this back door was all warped and crooked, and I've got it somewhat straightened out. Oh, whoops, caught my tape. At least it opens and closes now. I wouldn't do that before. It's got a backup beaver. Somebody's put lights in it. I've got those over on top of the Disco Nova. I'm gonna get these decals off. First, I'm gonna do some measurements. This thing is just, I don't know what's happened to it. It's been into something horrible. But it's really going to have to be cut down to get all these big... Uh, these aren't just paint scratches. These are these are in the metal. Big, sharp pieces of metal. But I've got some stuff. And Bobcat sent us their overhaul in a can. In case of that stuff. And decal here I got to figure out where that goes take some pictures and looks like I had another rental company on the side it's sticky to grind all that off up here it was painted with truck bed liner and the more I run the grinder over it the more it melted and just smeared I like never got that stuff off there I'm sure it was protecting it but we've also missing a step that stuff's on the way. This stuff's hard to get. Most of the stuff you try to order is out of stock. Somebody put a new seat in it. But what I'm going to work on tonight is it's uh, it's got tail lights or backup lights, but it don't have no headlights or tail lights. So I'm guessing that's a, probably a, either electrical fault or a fuse, probably a fuse. It's got two trouble codes in it. One of them is saying um, uh, low pressure. And we got another code that says no ground from the, um, what do they call them, thing? glow plugs. No ground from the glow plug to the computer. So there's an interruption of the ground somewhere. And just about all the stuff that goes wrong with these things is usually some type of electrical rather than it is a pressure problem. So, and the drives and everything seem pretty good, and it's only intermittent. Um, the gate comes up on me when I'm driving. When the gate comes up, it uh, stops the machine and throws the pressure code. So um, it just may be me that's causing it because I, because of my size, I can't get the gate down all the way, and the seat won't scoot back. It's like the tracks are locked, so I have to take the seat out and check on that. But I'm going to, the day I'm going to get into this breaker box down here, this fuse box, and see if the relay for the glow plugs is bad or dirty, see how much corrosion we got in there. I've looked in the back. There's another place in the back you can look at that seems to be a common problem with this style machine. 
if I can get this door to open, it don't have a latch. But there's a big fuse in here somewhere. It's right there. I noticed every now and then the charger light comes on. And that's a good clue that we've got a bad ground. So in order to check the charge pressure, I'm going to get in here and, and look at this. I can't really see it back in there. But there's a belt. This is the belt cover. When I get the battery out and the wiring out of the way, I'm going to take this cover off and inspect the belt and the pulley. It looks pretty good, but uh, if that belt's loose, I see little pieces of belt in there, so just, it needs to be inspected. Just want to make sure that we don't have a problem with the actual pump and the belt, and it is probably some type of grounding issue. Got a kind of a melted wire there, and the wires look decent on the alternator. At least it's easy to get to. On some of these, the alternator's on the back side. And everything looks kosher. The wiring harness looks good. I don't know about the glow plugs. We'll have to figure out how how those are wired. I don't think I'm not used to this motor. This it says Bobcat on the pot, top of it, but I think it's a Kubota. There's the injectors. I guess the glow plugs are on the back, which is great. That's the harness that could be bad. And I also think it has an exhaust leak. Possible. Or it had one. The previous owner has done some welding here. So the exhaust leak may be taken care of. This is a water-cooled engine. The last one we had was oil-cooled. It's a Deutz, Deutsch, whatever it is, German. Just shiny. I thought it would leak. This has an injection pump, fuel shut off solenoid. It's just going to take some cleaning. I suspect that our problems are probably in the fuse box, the relay, something like that. We'll get that cover off. We'll take a look at it. Then we'll come back here to the battery and take it out. fuel pool HVAC don't have HVAC front and marker lights oh, shoot that's hard to get out Be good. Rear lights. There's uh, two relays that are pulled out. Front 
marker light relay is this one to pull out. Come on now. That's no bueno. Need some memory cloth. Look at that, there's another one pulled out. And that is Unswitch accessories. The glow plug is completely missing. So there's where we got a blood glow plug light. Unless somebody's got a marred up bypass in the computer. Starter, traction pull, fuel pull. We know them's good. HVAC doesn't even need to be there. It doesn't have HVAC. Looks like a brand new switch. Hope it don't short something out when I plug it in for the glow plugs. Okay. Let's see. Don't need HVAC. Front marker lights we do need, but it needs to be cleaned up. And then the switch power. What is switch power? We'll find out in a minute. Just a little piece of emery cloth. We'll go over these little terminals. I may need to get some more fuses or relays. Actually I got a box of relays. I don't know what size these are. I believe it says 30. 30 seems like awful high. What's this one? Thirty's just a number. Uh, okay. Switch power. It's this one. Here, that's this one. They're exactly the same. This is DC twelve on it. Made in Canada, north of the border. Sometimes I saw Andrew Camarada take this out and the plugs that hold the back of this plug was pushed back in there and he had to push them all back in. And I suspect that could be a problem here while these are falling out. Yeah, they're not they're not wanting to stay. Okay, I've got the glow plugs in. Something may explode whenever I turn the key on. Let's hope not. Find the key switch here. something clacking. The glow plug is lit up. Seatbelt warning is lit up. And the glow plug just shut off. So they're working. The relay is working. No flash. No, nope, they're back on again. Yep. They're cycling. Yep, definitely cycling. Let's see if I can get the headlights to come on.
Yes. Yeah, I heard both relay kick. We've got headlights. Ooh, they're bright. Well, of course, I got the taillights in. I was going to go back and check them, but I already had the backup lights working, so I'd say the taillights are working. Better go back here and make sure nothing's burning down. Oh, they're, they're on. There's one on. That one's not on. Yeah, it's working too. So they're working. And I would be willing to bet the charge circuit and the uh, pressure circuit that's supposed to be relaying that switch low charge pressure is all connected to that those relays I can see that cycling up there hanging just a little I can hear all these things kicking so I thought we was going to have an adventure but I'd be willing to bet every one of those was a problem they, they've just fallen out that's silly Is that thing tight enough to hold them in there? I think it is. I don't believe it. So next thing I gotta do, I gotta take it outside to raise the cab up. When I get this cab raised up to work on this seat, I've got to look at the plugs on the back of this and make sure they're all pushed forward and not corroded. I need some boots also. Um, I just want to make sure they're not corroded. So that fixed the lights, the glow plug, and probably the charge. And the, uh, let's see which one of these was charged. That's just switch power. And starter down here. Traction pull. I ain't tried any of that. I thought this machine was a two speed. But um, I don't believe it is. I, I, I can't really tell. It's got two speed controls. I'm getting choked out by fumes now. There's the computer. It's the very bottom one. It's a 25 amp. Yeah. I think I might do it to hold these in place to keep them from falling back out. I think I might put me a piece of cardboard in here. And when I push this on, it's actually going to put pressure against them, hold them in place. See what that do. Amazon's always got your back. There's always an Amazon box laying around somewhere. Let's see how tight that goes. Uh, still, maybe I need to put another one in it. Catch on fire. It won't mount the plastic. Surely it won't, it won't burn the cardboard. Yeah, that's good and snug. I know that's silly engineering, but I don't think the front's the problem anyway. I think it's uh, they're pulled out from the back, and that's why the relays aren't staying in. Now, now that 
it should take care of our relays falling out. Now all I gotta do is sand all night and get some paint on it. Well this wound up being a whole lot quicker than what we thought. I believe I'll check when I get it outside and get it running, check the codes on it. I know that's taking care of the lights and the glow plug warning light and hopefully it takes care of the charging system and the charge pressure light but if it don't I have a uh, it's a pressure switch for the for the charge system if I'm going to replace that pressure switch when it gets here it should be here later on this week and that should if the charge light still comes on low charge pressure if that still comes on but if it doesn't fix it we'll go through and change the filters on it and there's a uh, case drain filter down there that comes back from your motors it goes back to the tank and those sometimes that's the best thing to inspect take it out they're cleanable you don't have to replace them unless they're just off or, or collapsed but I'll take those case drain filters out and look and see if there's any metal in them to make sure that there's nothing wrong with the drives but a lot of times when you're having electrical problems that charge light comes on and it has nothing to do with your your hydraulic system it's just uh, we'll look at that switch and if it switches it's got three it's a three wire switch just under the cab here and if it has hydraulic fluid leaking out then we'll know that the switch is bad and that should take care of it if it's even still on it wasn't on right then when I started it up but we may have to drive it a little bit and see but I've already started cleaning on it here it's looking pretty good there was a big sticker down this side got some numbers here I'm gonna take some measurements that's for another video the painting the electronics is what I want to take care of today which was super super easy I hope that stays but we'll go to phase two of it when we get it outside and get the cab up and we'll try to check all those wires for corrosion make sure they're seated do you thank Andrew Camarada for that that was something he found everything was corroded on that fuse block but he hates these machines, and I tell you what, I don't love them. The, the Bobcats, I kind of learned how to work on them, but not because I want to learn how to work on them, but it's because you have to. The last one we had, I thought we had it sorted pretty good, and I put it for sale, and I put all, unfortunately, I put all my attachments with it whenever I put it for sale because I was planning on getting a Mini X. I didn't need any Bobcat attachments. Well, I wound up trading, and now I don't have any attachments. I don't have the backhoe bucket, which does not work on this machine anyway. But uh, you can make any of them fit. I saw a fella that he cut his backhoe attachment up and put pins in this part of the boom here and made it. But once you cut it up to fit this machine, it won't fit nothing else. They also make one that fits this machine. And it connects in here somewhere. I thought it connected into these, but it can't possibly connect into them with these cylinders in the way. I don't know what it connects to. Maybe there's something, there's four little holes here. And those are directly underneath the step. There's a step that goes here, which is coming tomorrow. Should be here tomorrow. I got to get it outside. Get this, it's supposed to be pretty tomorrow. We'll get this boom raised up. Sand all this front off of this thing and then paint it. And then put my new black steps on. I got a new step for here, but it ain't just a step that's bad. It really needs to be worked in this corner. But it's all coming in the future. More bobcat crap. And I've never had the hood up on this, so who knows what magical mysteries we'll find when we get inside the cab. Well, I appreciate you guys watching. Thanks for hanging out with me and riding along on this new journey, this new adventure that we're getting into. Um check back with me a couple of days and we should have some updates on this thing get it cleaned up a little bit appreciate you watching please like share and subscribe uh, subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell and anytime we do something new you can ride along with us and see what kind of craziness we're getting into i do appreciate you watching thanks everybody stay clean